I'm back and today we're talking about an EV box, a wall box, a charger, a thing to charge your electric vehicle, your car. So I ventured into the magical world of EV chargers and I must say if you thought phones and computers were terrible, welcome to the world of EV chargers. It's just one big pile of rubbish products and then you have to try to find a good one. And I'm here to help you because I found a good one and it's the Zeptec Go. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what it is, what it does, what it looks like and what I think of it. Before I begin, I want to state that I'm not sponsored by Zeptec. I just bought this device myself with my own money. My name is Hot Dog Soup and I'm a YouTuber. And for all the people who are new here, I am an epic iOS, macOS, software developer, senior ninja. And I'm also an electrician. Not a lot of people know that. And considering that an EV charger mostly consists of electrical stuff and an app, I thought it would be a nice and interesting topic for a video. So while I was looking for an EV charger for my car, I stumbled upon this, the Zeptec Go. And then I found out there is almost nothing to be found about this charger on the internet. There's only one YouTube video about it and there's not a lot of websites that talk about it and there are not a lot of stores that sell it. So I thought, what's going on with this? Well, it turns out Zeptec is a relatively new company. It's a company from Norway and as we all know, in Norway, almost everybody drives an electric car. They are at the forefront of electric vehicles and electric charging. Zeptec started a couple of years ago and they installed tens of thousands of professional charging stations and charging sites across Norway. So I thought, aha, they are from Norway. There's even a picture of the Norway coast on the box. So it must be an interesting charging product. I couldn't buy it. It was not available in my country. I live in the Netherlands, but I found it in a German web store and I convinced them to deliver it to the Netherlands. The Zeptec products and especially the Zeptec Go is only available in Scandinavia at the moment, but I think they're going to roll out to other countries this year. So yes, wall chargers, EV chargers. As I said earlier, it's a terrible world of miserable looking devices. Why can't manufacturers make something that actually looks nice? You're putting it on the front of your house. Why does it have to look like trash? I was in the market for an EV charger, but I wanted one that looked nice. Most of all, because my house is in a protected monumental village. So there are rules and regulations and I cannot just change anything about the house and make it ugly. Apart from looking terrible, most EV chargers also have a lot of other problems. If you look at customer reviews for most EV chargers, you will always find something that doesn't work. Either it doesn't charge or it breaks after a few weeks. Or uh, for instance, if it has Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi will drop every two hours. Or if it works and the Wi-Fi is great, the app totally sucks. And if everything is great and the app is great too, then the customer service sucks. And if you want to claim warranty, for instance, you get no reply. So watch out when you're buying an EV charger. Check out the customer reviews because most of them really actually suck balls. Yo, go dummy, go beast. And I'm hoping that the Zeptec Go is a good one. So I ordered it, I received it, and here it is. Let's have a look. Before I dive into the Zeptec Go itself, here are some specs. Zeptec claims that it works with any car. Zeptec also claims that it is 10 times faster than other chargers and it is smaller and lighter. They actually claim that it is the smallest charger in the world. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Look at this one. Zeptec gives you a five year warranty and that was one of the things that made me decide, okay, let's buy this. I don't know this company, but let's buy it. I've got five years of warranty. It's available in six colors, which is really nice. And it has 4G and Wi-Fi connectivity. So even if you don't want it on your Wi-Fi network, it still works. And it also has Bluetooth, so you can hold your phone in front of it and it, it recognizes it. It also has an RFID reader or NFC reader. It can run on TN, IT and TT networks. 
of 230 volts AC or 400 volts. It can charge at 22 kilowatts, 12.7 or 7.4 depending on the way it is connected. And it has a type 2 socket. It has an earth fault protection. Earth Earth full. <laughs> it has an <laughs> it has an earth full. Okay, it has an it has a protection. Okay, and as for software, it has an app control, but it also has a huge backend system which offers all kinds of interfacing and web hooks and other stuff that you can connect to it. There are two things that Zeptec Go doesn't have, which I find a little bit strange. First of all, it doesn't have an RJ45 or Ethernet port, so it's wireless only, no wired networking. The other thing is that it doesn't support any form of local load balancing. If you want load balancing or automatic power management, it must go through the Zeptec Cloud. And you also need either a Zeptec APM or a Zeptec Sense, I don't know the difference between them, but neither of them seem to be available anywhere, so it's a little bit unclear. So those were the specs, now let's look at the Zaptec Go itself. So the enclosure is really small, it's a, it's a very small device. And being a technical guy, I opened the device immediately, because I wanted to see first of all what it looked like inside. And I also wanted to test it a little bit and set it up before I installed it on the wall. So if I weren't happy with it, I could still return it to the shop. And honestly, when opening it up, I was amazed about the build quality. Everything is in one nice enclosure. There's just five wire contacts, some cable guides, and that's it. So I did something that you shouldn't do unless you're an electrical engineer. I connected a regular plug to it so I could plug it in and then see how the setup worked. When I plugged it in, the right became yellow, orange, and then I decided to connect the app. The user manual states that you have to set it up using the app, so I decided to do that while it was laying in front of me on the table. I downloaded the Zeptac app from the App Store, it's uh, both for iPhone and iPad, and I started to add the device by scanning its QR code. The QR code is on a sticker inside the machine and there's also a pin code to identify it. And then I got an error message. The charging station can be added to an installation before it's been set up by an installer. Are you an installer? Install Zaptec Go. And then I thought, yeah, I'm an installer. So I tapped on the button that I am indeed an installer and then nothing happened. I got a spinner. I just got a spinner. Just something that was happening but it didn't tell me what was happening. So after about two or three minutes, I decided to quit it. I decided to cancel this installation by tapping the back button. So I decided to try it again. I scanned the QR code again and I got the same error message. You have to be an installer. And then the same thing happened. Another spinner with nothing happening. So that didn't work. I couldn't install it. Damn, why not? Okay, let's try something else. I used my camera app to scan the QR code of the device. I don't know why, I figured it would take me to some sort of URL or customer support or portal site. Well, that didn't happen. It immediately opened the same app again, but this time it found my device and it showed me some installation details that I had to add. So I entered all the details and because I'm an electrician, I know what to put here. If you're a normal, regular customer, you probably don't know. So that's why Zeptec wants you to have an installer that actually fills out these details. And then success. Now I could initiate charging. My Zeptec Go was installed and ready to go. The app went back to the home screen and then I found out there was no charger. What? I just added it. What are you doing? Zeptec, come on. I'm guessing this is the difference between being an installer and being a user. There are two separate processes that need to be followed. According to Zeptec, first the installer needs to install the device and then the user needs to add the device in a separate step. I tried to refresh the screen, but that didn't work. So I then thought, well, let's add it again. Let's scan the QR code again, perhaps. And then I got the screen about entering my information for the charging station. So apparently it had found the charging station. So I added some details and there it was, my charging station. It was added to the app correctly. 
The funny thing is about this whole setup process is that it never asks to be connected to Wi-Fi. So apparently the whole setup and installation and software updates just works through 4G. But I'm wondering if you don't have 4G coverage in your area, shouldn't it ask for a Wi-Fi connection or something? So that was the installation procedure of this app. And I must say, no, Zeptech, no. I know this is a minimum viable product. I know that it's a new app. I know that I'm in a country where you don't sell it. Okay, I know, I understand, but this has to work better. Now it's time to decide. Am I sending this back? No, I'm not. The device setup was kind of dodgy, but it works now. And I decided to put it on my wall, install it for real, and then start using it. So it is installed now, let's have a look at the app. The Zeptech app is relatively simple. You can just see that it's charging and how fast it's charging. And you can add key fobs and RFID tags to control access to charging. You can edit some of the charger settings, but most of the settings have to be done in the online portal. You can view your charging history, but if you want some statistics, you have to go to the dashboard again. The app also has some layout issues, but that's a minor thing. And the weird thing is, is that sometimes it doesn't show anything at all. So I don't know, it needs to be improved. It would be nice if the app had a feature to start and stop charging. And it would also be nice if they had push notifications to notify me when the car is full or charging is finished or when there's an error. The charging history is not always updated correctly and it takes a while before the latest charging sessions appear. And then something about privacy. The app only appears to contact api.zeptech.com, which is really great. Thank you Zeptech for not including 10 libraries that track me. Zeptech is a Norwegian company and even though they are not in the European Union, they still follow the rules for European trade and they also follow the GDPR regulations about privacy of their users. And that is really great. Apart from the quirks in the app, the device is really working well. It charges nicely, it looks nice, it gives good feedback with the color of the lights. You can lock the cable that's attached to it, which is really handy because people can't steal your cable. And it's a really sturdy and well-built device. The app is kind of dodgy and it has some aspects that don't really work very well, but it works. I would like to see my charge statistics in the app, but I'm sure this will appear in a future update. The online dashboard has a lot of features, which is really nice, but it also shows installations and stuff that a regular consumer probably wouldn't understand. But I'm guessing this is because I am both an end user and an installer at the same time. And then I get to see everything that normal people probably wouldn't see. It shows nice charts and the chart history can be downloaded as Excel files. In the portal, you can even schedule power control so your charger doesn't use as much power. For instance, when you're at home when you're cooking or washing or using other appliances that use a lot of power. It would be nice if some of these features would be added to the app so that you don't have to go to the web portal all the time. The web portal is however responsive and it does work on a phone. Considering the price, it's 800 euros, I think it's a good deal. I'm guessing the software will improve and then you have a product that's really nice and really works very well. If Zeptech fixes the app, it will be a great product which I can easily give 5 stars. But for now, it's 3.5 stars because the app isn't really perfect yet. They're, yes, they're nearly there. Zeptech, if you're listening, you're nearly there. Make the software better and then you're done. You're, you're there. Hi, it's me from the future. I'm wearing different clothes. I've been using the Zeptech Go for a week now and I'm very satisfied. The app remains stable and it works perfectly. And I also had a little test of Zeptech customer service. I wanted to know if I could change the electrical grid that the Zeptech Go is connected to. So I submitted a support request through their Zendesk portal. And there it was a little bit mm, Before you can enter the details of your request, you have to specify if you've been in contact with your installer about the issue. And if you say no, then your request will be immediately closed and they will not even look at it. Now I understand that Zeptech doesn't want to answer dumb, annoying questions from dumb, annoying end users such as me. But it's a little bit customer hostile, I think. So I indicated that I indeed had contacted my installer, which isn't true. And then they answered my question perfectly fine. They were very friendly and I got an answer within 24 hours. 
So that was my customer experience with Zaptec. If you have a Zaptec Go and have different experiences, please comment. I'm really interested to know what your experiences are. If you like this video, please leave a like, please leave a comment, please subscribe. You know everything. Watch another video of me. I've got great videos. Thank you for watching and until next time.